Miller. Five flies to get you through the month. January. Mike. T. Chap. Bowdy pop. No girly bobbers. <laughs>Good day. <laughs> Good It's Ivan with Strauss Fly Fishing. Ivan Orsic. That's a European name. Quick fact. It's Croatian. One Euro fact. Yeah, yeah. One Euro fact. Back with your uh, January episode of Five Flies here with Strauss Fly Fishing. I'm joined by Russell Miller, Team USA, Director of Marketing with Umqua, and uh, a Euro nymphor. <clears throat> Two Euro references. Yeah. So, look. I'm not very, I'm a bobber boy. I'm not very good at Euro nymphing. In fact, I know very little about Euro nymphing. So we are joined by Russ, who's uh, obviously very good at Euro nymphing. He's competed for the, team, uh, for the United States in many international competitions of high prestige and great su- with great success, right? Great success! Yes. <laughs> very nice! <laughs> so Russ is going to talk about uh, fly choice. He's going to talk about uh, rigging. Cover a couple of the basics. Cover a couple of the basics, yeah. right? Give you guys and, a little, uh, little intro. I know yeah. Courtney says she's got something going on later. Yeah. Uh, where we're going to be trying to do a Euro if class. You're so Euro, if you're Euro curious, you're curious we will be of, having a Euro class. A lot of people are these days. Yeah. So for the Euro curious folks out there, um, uh, in this day and age, when, when I got started, just to back up, like there was, there was one book I was able to find. Uh, it was called Czech Nymph. 
Um, and it, it was, was written by one of the members of the Czech team, and it was like the Bible because there was so little information yeah. that existed. Now there's a variety of manufacturers, including Umqua, that have like a whole range of your products. So the people that are getting into it today um, have like their best foot already forward. There's there's a far less kind of like exploration of like learning the technique. Now it's like undo your leader, knot it on, and start fishing. Um, for dummies, so you, for me, I could do it now. You could maybe do it. Wow, that's that's great. The that's leaders great. are 20 feet. There was some shock and awe when we said that earlier. You know, I've seen long leaders in my days. I've never seen a 20 foot leader though. Watch out, baby. <clears throat> They're coming for you. I'm um, terrified. The, the reason for the long leader uh, is, is ultimately we're throwing the weight of the flies, right? We're not throwing fly line with your nymphing. The, the idea is that you're fishing in contact uh, okay. with your flies. Um, you can introduce slack into the system to, to help aid the drift or sink rate. Um, but you're really in contact with your flies and that long leader allows you to reach out over currents. And so you're essentially high sticking. For, for folks that have been out doing it forever, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, this is tight line high sticking nymphing. We've been doing this in Colorado for 30 years. You have. Um, the difference between what we're doing now. I don't know why they had to sound like that, Russ. Well. Why'd they have to sound like nerds? Uh, they don't sound like nerds. Maybe they're just a little upset that, yeah. uh, that their technique is now being uh, eclipsed by this Euro curious right. craze. Right. Uh, but the difference between what, what you've been doing and what the Euros have been doing um, is that everything is tied directly in line and it's all much finer than we fish it here in the West. Um, okay. So, like today, I was fishing 7X and no problem. 7X is going to aid my sink rate. It, it cuts through, so it allows me to fish lighter flies. Yeah. Um, and I can access the bottom and heavy current still um, fairly effectively. So effectively, like, you can, you can snap them off too. Um, but yeah, so as far as like flies go, everything's tied in line. So when I rig up, I've got a, a colored section, my, uh, my bicolor tippet material, okay. which is my guide to what's happening under the water. So as this tippet material like is vertical, it means my flies are up and down. If I'm fishing a riffle, you'll notice it's always at kind of this angle, right? So I can adjust my angle to help either allow me to get down and just sit my flies on the bottom. Right. Or if I'm like this, the current's going to grab it and, and pull it along and kind gotcha. of give me that natural drift. So that colored tippet uh, is my first visual aid. And then off of that, I've got a tippet ring. And I'll tie a, um, a surgeon's loop, right? Most anglers know two knots. Surgeons, one, two, three. And I leave a tag end long. I'll tie my fly onto that. And I'll tie a fly on the point. Um, and so I'll tie two flies on. I like my heavy one on the bottom. Yeah. I like the heavy one on the bottom, it turns the whole rig over. Yeah. But, uh, but more importantly, it keeps everything tight, right? So I get maximum sensitivity on that top driver. It's your anchor. It's my anchor. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, so let's jump into the five flies. Let's do it. Let's talk flies. Fly number one. Hit it. Fly number one, Russ, is the tan mop fly, size eight. So Cheeseman has an awesome population of crane flies. Uh, the fish are accustomed to seeing those flies. And the big mop, what I love about that on the point, the bottom of my rig, <laughs> is it's one of those flies that acts as a parachute, right? So the way to think about that is it's going to move your whole rig so much slower, right? Yeah. And, um, and when we talk about fly number two, It'll help draw some extra attention to that. But the mop fly really like, it gets bit plenty, but um, yeah. one of the reasons I really like it and, and find it to be so effective, even during non-crane fly times in, in the canyon, would be the fact that it just slows my entire rig down and gives those fish time to see some of those smaller offerings. Gotcha, gotcha, cool. Fly number one, there we go. Number two now. Yeah. Fly do. That's two, by the way. Uh, I'm a learned man. That's two in German, or so I'm told. Uh, fly two is uh, size 16, extra heavy, tungsten, rainbow warrior. Fish me if you warrior. want to live. <laughs> that was Arnold Schwarzenegger, since we were on the German thing. He's uh, Austrian, but it's close. It's close. It's, it's all the same thing, right? We're splitting hairs here. Rainbow warrior. That was a pretty bad Arnold Ar Schwarzenegger, if we're being honest. Well, I can try again. Try again, try again. <clears throat> Fish me if you want to live. That's pretty good. That's better. That's still not great. Yeah. 
I wouldn't like, I wouldn't go to Vegas and try to work the streets with that one though. You know? I don't wanna. Dude, what if I had this on, dude, and like had my pecs flexing? I think I could pull that You on. got pecs to flex? Dude, if I was, like, had some time to lead up to yeah, Vegas. Yeah, yeah, all right, noted. Ru Ru Russell Miller has some pecs to flex. And he's gonna tell us about the Rainbow Warrior. Tell us about it, Russ. We've wasted these people's time long enough. Tell us about the Rainbow Warrior. So the Rainbow Warrior uh, is a pattern developed by Lance Egan. Um, I thought it was Egon. Uh, Fre in, it's French, in, right? In Europe, they do say yeah, Egon yeah. every now and then. Um, here, we just call him Lance. Gotcha. Uh, maybe Sir Lance a lot. Lance. Lance. Lance, Egon. Egon, -e. Egon. Okay, sorry. Uh, but the, the Rainbow Warrior, the beauty of that fly is uh, the extra Cousin Eddie showed up, guys. <laughs> As we were saying before uh, Cousin Eddie parked his pace arrow over there to, to empty out his shitter, we were talking about the Rainbow Warrior. So the Rainbow Lance Egon. 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 Uh, the beauty of the Warrior um, is it's a uh, it's an awesome tailwater fly, um, especially in conditions like we had today. We were fishing, it was either bright sun or dark shade, yeah. right? In, in the bright sun with that all uh, mirage body, like it, it just, it brings fish over to him. But on the counter side of that, in the in the dark shade, it helps bring a little extra glitz and glam to the rig yeah. um, and bring fish over to it. Uh, it's a great fly. In some of those shallow pockets, you could put that on your point and something smaller above that. Yeah. Or um, for really getting down and dirty, fishing that mop fly and the extra heavy warrior is an awesome combo. Cool. Nice. That's fly. Do. Fly. Trois. Trace. Trace. Toi. Trace. Fly toi. That's uh, that's three in English. No big deal. One, two, and three. Toi, toi. Tungsten, zebra midge, black, eighteen. So you you might notice some of these flies they have a lot of crossover. So this is a, a standard standard in many boxes. Talk to us about how it can be used in a Euro rig. Sure. Or yeah. Russell. Um, Hey, the zebra midge is one of those flies that there's the, there's variations of it, but nothing fish is quite like the original. If you don't have zebra midges in your box, you're missing out. And the tungsten version would be a great example of what you may be missing out on. Um, Euro rig or non-Euro rig, it's going to help you access deeper, swifter currents a little bit faster. Um, what you potentially lose with the tungsten version to have both in your box would be a little extra drift uh, if you're fishing some of those really, really soft currents. But on the Euro rig with our anchor fly and that tungsten zebra up top, um, we can kind of park our anchor on some of those really soft spots. And that tungsten version just kind of swims in the current by itself there. Yeah. Um, and we can, uh, you, maybe you guys will watch some of the fishing, maybe you didn't. Uh, you'll see I, I, I bounce my rig a lot and that's just to move that anchor fly uh, down the sand yeah. and allow that smaller tungsten zebra midge to kind of keep swimming in that in that upper reaches. Cool. Dancing it. All Dancing right. it, baby. Let's fly toi. <laughs> fly uh, four. I don't, this is where my uh, <laughs> French education has failed me. Four is... Just think of the Audi Quattro. Yeah, I guess. But I can't pronounce that, man. I'm terrible at, I'm terrible at pronouncing Quattro. Cat, cat. I can't do Beautiful. it. Beautiful. All right, fly number four is two bit hooker size sixteen pink. Yeah, there we go. Talk uh, to us, Russ. Oh, so sorry. Pink's one of those colors that I always love to put on the rig at some point. Uh, unfortunately, you had to watch me rig rig like a million times. I, I noticed that you like to tie knots. I play Big with fan. my weights constantly. If yeah. I feel like I'm not getting down, I feel like I'm getting out too much. I'm always changing things up. So the introduction of a two bit is great because you have two tungsten beads to help bury that. And some of those stronger currents, you needed to just cut through some of that stuff. And that two bit is great for that. Again, pink is a color I'm gonna rotate into my rig all the time. There are some days where it's just unstoppable. It punishes fish. And there's other days where you just can't buy one on it. But yeah. at some point, I'm always gonna rotate that in. It's a great, great color combo. How many times do you think you uh, change flies a day? 40? Two knots? Yeah, probably tied. Yeah. Pretty good, pretty good tying knots. That's all I'm, I'm, I'm Cold saying. Cold hands in January. Yeah, Happens. yeah, it's great. All right, that's fly number quatre. Fly Cinco. Sink. Cinco de Mayo. <clears throat> Cinco de Mayo is 
the Juju. Betis. Betis. Tungsten. Purple, size 20. A Craven fly. Charlie Craven. Talk to us about this Craven fly there, Russell. Yeah, Talk to us. Tell us how great it is. It's purple. Let's start with purple. Purple's always a good color. Again, one of those colors just like pink. Right. Like, play with it, mix it into the rig. Yeah. Um, J Jake, who's here shooting the video, he loves green and purple, olive and purple. He actually dropped every one of his flies in his fly box today. It was a sight to be seen. Look, a lot of purple flies left in Cheeseman Canyon today. Look for the photo on social. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jake likes purple flies. Russ likes, Russell likes purple flies. I like purple J flies too. Yeah, Jake likes purple flies for a reason. They catch fish. Right, yeah, right? no like, doubt. Um, it's one of those colors that just has a natural trigger to it. Uh, and again, like much like pink, you got to put it on your rig at some point. Um, you know, a lot of these flies fall into kind of um, impressionistic or very realistic. Um, yeah. Purple's kind of one of those impressionistic colors, but it's also one of those trigger colors that just make flies jump on it. So, right. and purple's on, purple's. Purple on, dude. Yeah. How many fish do you think have been caught on the South Platte and Cheeseman Canyon on a juju? I, 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 I wouldn't dare to guess. Because I'd be underestimating. It's my a lot. Guess. And so a tungsten yeah. version of it on the Euro rig, we can kind of fish flies that you're confident in right. uh, in your regular rig, um, and bring them into that Euro world. Yeah. Uh, the Euro curious out there, you can fish the you know fish some flies that get some flies that you might not. Did you have confidence uh, in? Yeah, you you might be able to fish on your normal bobber rig. Uh, so if you don't like Euro fishing, you can still find use for these flies. Although jig flies, let's be real, jig flies, heavy flies, they're useful in any rig. Good flies are good flies. Good flies are good flies. That's true. That's fly number five. All right. Thanks for tuning in for uh, this month's edition of Five Flies. Big thanks to Russell Miller for uh, showing us the ways of the world. Oh, oh! Before before uh, before we go, let's just say hi to cousin Eddie. Get cousin Eddie. Woo! Pace there. Let's go. Cousin Eddie. All right. That was more fun than catching trout. Dude, I, Cousin Eddie, <laughs> most valuable player of uh, Five Flies for uh, January. It's got a lasting smell. This yeah. is very nice. Pungent. <clears throat> the aroma. I can't really smell it, but it, Take it I, in I've deep. heard it's great. Take it in deep. So, like I was saying, thanks for tuning in to, to this month's edition of Five Flies. Big thanks to Russell Miller for showing us the, the ways of uh, the world when it comes to urine nymphing. Obviously, that's a, uh, a brief jump into the world of urine nymphing. It's obviously you can get into all sorts of weird hopefully it inspires things. you to learn more right right so we ha we do we will be having a, a, a on the water class a euro nymphing class i think was it you and uh grapham nothing's been confirmed yet. nothing's been confirmed but i've heard heard rumor that a lot of there's going to be uh some talented people doing uh teaching class so if you're you're interested uh give us a shout did you want to wrap up anything talk about uh talk about anything any, one, any last words for the, oh, the Euro the Euro curious out there? I got a last word. Yeah? I don't know if you uh, captured do I have to, it. Should I, don't I don't bleep it? it? Should, we no, can bleep no, it? No, nothing to bleep. All right. The magic of Cheeseman Canyon in January. That's true. It's incredible. We, remember those those snowflakes just coming off oh. the uh, just <laughs> little <laughs> magic fairy dust? If you're thinking about going fishing, go fishing. It's, it's true. still awesome. Uh, Even when it's cold. Yes. Even when it's cold, it's still worth it. Bring a buddy. It's the, the I think you're using that pretty li liberally, buddy. Me. In a tracksuit. Yeah. Special thanks to uh, to Trout's Fishing for the tracksuit <laughs> and fancy glasses. That's it's, special. Hey, we're we're happy to do it, Russell. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See us in the shop. Happy New Year. Okay. Bye. <laughs>